All right, how are we going? Right, so what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about Scream, okay? So I'm going to go into a little video of all the different killers, okay? So without ado, first up, we got Billy, my boy, Loomis, and Stu, Mirka, Mar. <laughs> okay, so you've got Billy, Loomis, and Stu. I'm just going to call them Billy and Stu. They are our first killers. Um, moving on after our first two killers, we have Mrs. Loomis, Billy's mama. And we also got Mickey, the freaky Tarantino film student. All right. After them, we got our trilogy. We got one killer. However, I'm going to say we got two killers. Um, our two killers are Roman and Angelina. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why I think that. Number four, Jill. And we've got Charlie. Okay. So Jill and Charlie, that's scream number four. Scream 5, we got our killers. If you're already watching to this point, I presume you've seen the movies. If you have not seen the movies, because it's the most recent, I don't want to spoil it. So big fat spoiler alert right here. What? Spoiler. Richie and Amber. If you feel like this has been spoiled on you now, despite my spoiler warning, that's on you. But I also feel bad about it too. So, spoiler warning, I'm Scream 5, or Scream 22, whatever you want to call it. I have a theory about it because there's something that happened in the movie. I've already spoiled who the killers are, so there's no point in really saying spoilers anymore. It's done. It's happened. So, without further ado, let's get into why I think what I think. Now, if you have recently watched some of the Scream movies, um, you're going to be basically on the ball with most of what I'm about to tell you. But some of you might kind of raise your eyebrows like, you know, uh, one up, one down. We'll see what happens. But if I can, I'm going to try to keep you with me. Um, my whole train of thought so without it let's just see what happens okay screen number one we got billy and we got Stu. you're all happy with that could be an extra killer technically there is an extra killer he didn't kill anyone but he did get the ball rolling and i'm going to come back to that very same person in a little while okay so that is scream one billy Stu, two killers oh baby scream number two Okay, Scream 2 is a little bit different, okay? We still got two killers, but the whole thing changes up slightly. So we've got our mastermind, who I'm going to put down to Mrs. Loomis, same as her son. Billy was also a mastermind. Uh, Stu would have been the patsy, not really a patsy, but the accomplice, let's just call him that. Um, Mickey would be Mrs. Loomis's lackey, or let's say apprentice, whatever you want to call them. They're accomplice. Um, number 3, Scream 2. Okay, this is where it's going to get interesting, okay? So the main killer in Scream 3 is Roman Bridger, who is the adopted, sorry, the step-brother, half-brother of Sidney Prescott. And um, he does all his own shit and whatever. Uh, I do believe there's a second killer in this because there's loads of scenes that just don't make sense without it. Um, but one of the big ones is basically Angelina. Um, there's a couple of different scenes where you'd be like, hmm, she's a bit of an unusual character. Her arc is a little bit incomplete. And in fairness, the film went through different rewrites of scripts and stuff like that. So they eventually cut her parts down. I think she was intended to be a villain, but she wasn't put in it. However, you could still argue the point that she was involved in it. There's a scene where she's in the bathroom and Sidney catches her with like the mask and all that shit. Her excuse, absolute bullshit. Also, her character later on has a kind of hysterical moment here or there. And I believe she was still an accomplice of... Roman, Roman being the mastermind, Ma Roman also being the mastermind to the first film, okay, so he also explains it, uh, that he basically got in touch with Billy, so Billy was his accomplice, or Patsy. But Billy's father, that was the key. Your boyfriend didn't like seeing his daddy in my film too much, he didn't like it at all. Once I supplied the motivation, all the kid needed was a few pointers. Do it! A partner to sell out in case you get caught, find someone to frame, it was like he was making a movie. So he got Billy in and then somehow managed to get Billy to get Stu in. I'm sure it was Billy he went to first and then Billy found Stu. So again, Billy being the mastermind, but then really after the third one, which the rules do dictate, um, everything you thought you knew is not right. Number three, the past will come back to bite you in the ass. Whatever you think you know about the past, forget it. The past is not at rest. Any sins you think were committed in the past are about to break out and destroy you. So, Roman comes back into it, he is responsible for basically Maureen Prescott's death, uh, and then much, much later on, um, 
let's say for Scream 5, I have a theory that will come into place more so in Scream 6. If you watch that film, there's definitely two ghost faces and it just makes more sense that they cut the part just because they were changing the script as opposed to her not having done anything at all. So we will talk about that in a little while because I do want to come back to kind of the Roman arc because I think he actually did some cool shit. Um, but we'll talk about him in a little while. Scream number five. Ba, 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 ba. Okay, so Scream 2022 is a newer one. So obviously, if you've not seen this, this is a spoiler because I'm going to just basically talk about the two killers, possibly a third killer. Um, but again, this third killer talk probably is a little bit on the nose. Like it could easily be blow the shite that I'm talking, which it probably is. Um, but basically, yes, in Scream number five, we've got two killers. Um, it's hard to tell you which one is the mastermind, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you that neither of them are the mastermind. But if you're talking about like Roman Bridger getting involved with Stu and Billy, Billy was the mastermind, but really it was Roman. So in this situation, if you're only going to put Richie, Richie and Amber, I would actually put it down to Richie being the mastermind. It could be Amber. Like I'm, I don't really care which one of them two it is. However, I think there's a third accomplice involved in it. And I think... Number three, the past will come back to bite you in the ass. Whatever you think you know about the past, forget it. The past is not at rest. Any sins you think were committed in the past are about to break out and destroy you. It's Stu Maher, all right? I know I'm not the first person to have talked about this, but I do have a good train of talk behind the whole idea. Um, so basically, Amber lives in Stu's old home. That's feckin' self-explanatory. Uh, she could have easily reached out to him. She found Richie on an online chat room. They both were just fans to stab. Somehow their relationship blossomed and they got onto this idea and eventually they just, you know, decided that they were going to go ahead with this weird plan to get, you know, the stab reboot going. Whatever their main goal was, we won't go into the motives behind it. It's really possible that Stu was involved in it because they met on an online chat room um, for stab fans and stuff like that. Within Scream 2022, there is many references to Stu still possibly being alive. And um, is it that much of a stretch to think that they could have at some point reached out to Stu or he saw them chatting online and he was like, maybe I can approach these people. Because one thing is that in Scream 3, it went through a lot of different rewrites and stuff like that. But one of the main plot points was actually to have Stu from prison or from jail actually be involved with the two killers who would have been high school students now this script didn't go ahead because of columbine shooting and that was like you know students shot in the school and there was like no we can't we can't do that we got to change it i was in london recently i was talking to Nev. i was like tell tell uh williamson i'll come back <laughs> i'd love to come back you got killed well the funny thing is right? i was supposed to come back for the third one nobody knows this but right. the the third one they had written in uh me to be the killer in the third one now how, and how is that going to be justified? Because you were I killed. I only took at the a TV first, on the head. What? I took a TV. On is that the head. what it was? That's how I died. So, so the, the theoretically, idea was you could have been from jail. I was masterminding this kind of oh. um, this this attack against Sydney Nev's character. Three weeks before we were supposed to start shooting, Columbine High School broke, and they changed everything. They kind of took the script and threw it to the side, and they 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 bought me out, and I never did the third one. So, like the actual actor who played Stu, he was brought on, contracted. He didn't actually have to do any work, but Wes Craven wanted that character back in the show or back in the film, and um, so. There's even like a little cameo in number two where Mickey goes off in the background of a party and he's actually talking to Matthew Lillard, who is Stu. And Monica style is okay, right? Oh yeah. Cocktail. He, you know, it's just a small thing. Like they don't show it, and there's obviously, it is more of a cameo than anything else. But the whole point is that Wes Craven uh, wanted to keep this character alive, and I can't see any reason why, in the own words of Roman Bridger, basically you find somebody who you can get to do these things and then that's how you go about doing it so is it a stretch to think that if Stu is still in prison and he's like i know like oh how do you survive it doesn't matter it's a horror movie it legitimately does not matter <laughs> you could say whatever you want you saw amber's charred cold body and she came back and every other one has come back at some point and uh, Stu got the tv on him fine M maybe not death but basically i feel like he is going to be involved in this and my thing to kind of jump to this conclusion is it could easily be a stunt issue but I don't buy that shit because I hate it and um, I believe that Stu was working with Richie and Amber and I really want to describe this one scene and this is the only reason that 
I want to go down this and make it be true. There's a scene in Scream 5, again, spoilers, stop now, stop now, I warned you, I warned you. Scream 5, there's a scene where Dewey gets fucked up, murdered, like, really, really, really fucking badly. Now, later on in Scream 5, we have Amber to actually take credit for that, and during the time of the stabbing, she says, it was an honor, and she basically proceeds to, to cut him up the stomach and the back all at the same time, like right up to the sternum, so it's really fucking graphic, heartbreaking, because it's Dewey. But basically, in that scene, she is very, very strong, okay? Now, when I watched this, I was trying to guess who the killers were. I knew Richie right from the get-go. I was like, this fucking guy. Like, I've seen The Boys. He plays a nice guy in The Boys. Um, so, obviously, if he's still playing that nice guy character, they're going to turn that shit around. Like, you know, that's 100% what was going to happen. But then you had Amber. She got shot in the chest. She got body armor. Whatever. That shit still hurts. And uh, then she was able to gut Dewey like an absolute pig. And it was so fucking, like, no. <laughs> David, I can't, my man. So basically, yeah, he gets good at uh, In that scene, I I was like, well, I'm pretty sure Richie was it. And even at the time before I saw who the final was, I was like, oh, it's going to be Stu. They're going to bring him back. This is going to be so cool. Turned out it wasn't Stu. But I still don't believe at the end of it, Amber takes credit for it. She just says, oh, yeah, I, I did that. But I'm like... All right, not to like bring in lots of different things into it, but basically she's a small petite woman and like Dewey's got a lot of nerve damage. So I'm not saying that she couldn't beat him in the fight, especially when knives are involved, but the brutality of it, it was in my mind, I was like, oh, that's like, that's gotta be a guy, you know? And the more I think about it, the more I still think it could be. And if they wanted to in the next film, what they could do is they could just say, Amber wasn't even there. It wasn't Amber. Richie's in the elevator with them. It was Stu. Stu was involved from the get-go. He was like, you know, like Amber lived in his house. Richie and her were really close and they would have been like online all the time. If they were able to reach out to him at some point, he could have gotten involved. He did that one scene. He said it was an honor in my brain. It's like, oh, it clicks. It's perfect. It makes a lot of sense. Now, why would Amber not reveal Stu's involvement? Because he's like the, the mastermind, you know, like he's, he's not, supposed to be involved and maybe in the sixth one he'll like let us know about that situation but it wouldn't be amber or richie's place to kind of throw him under the bus especially since in every single third act of a screen movie you know they just have a big exposition dump and then they lose and then it's like oh you gave away the ball game so there's only two one other killer that i can think of that didn't really do that and he did but roman I'm pretty sure Roman killed off his accomplice or his patsy, whatever you want to call it, before the exposition dump because he had a very, you know, let's just say it was a very raw relationship with him and Sydney. He was just, let's not get into too much of my life, but his mother abandoned him and she stayed with Sydney, so he's all pissed off about that. So rather than confront him with some randomer and just being like, oh yeah, um, yeah, like I did this because of this, she did it because I told her to. I think he killed her off before she was even known to be an accomplice and I think he was happier with that to like kind of take all of the credit for this because he's definitely the mastermind and I think he just had a patty to play some kind of a small role and then he got rid of them without the exposition dump. I feel like that's kind of like what happened here and the smaller part is that Amber didn't perform that kill but she basically took ownership of it just to kind of throw the others off the scent that there's a third person involved, that person being Stu. Now, everything I've just said could be absolute drivel, smack talk to the absolute max, but it really, like, sometimes I get my brain moving and I'm just like, this could easily be Stu because one thing I will never accept, and I'll leave it on this note, I will never accept that Amber, good at Dewey from front to back, so physically, so awfully, when the stunt double, it was most likely just a man in, like, an outfit. Obviously, stunt doubles and um, continuity don't necessarily have to go all the way. But, I mean, they've got it. If they want to bring Stu back in 
and like just say it was a stunt double, I will fucking jump on that. I will absolutely get on board with that. I would prefer that so much more to leaving it on that note than to leaving it as Amber just fucking destroyed Dewey after taking like seven or eight bullets to the chest. It's like, ah, oh, you know what I mean? So if it's if it turns out to be true, fucking amazing. If it doesn't turn out to be true, it was just a fun theory that I wanted to throw out there, get off the top of my brain. And there's lots of other YouTubers out there that basically will corroborate this kind of talk. Not exactly what I've said, but if you look into a couple of different um, YouTubers that talk about this subject matter, there's a good few of them. And I have watched some of their videos, but this whole Stu thing, going into five, I thought Stu and Richie were going to be the killers. So when it was Amber, I was like, oh, fuck. All right, well, that's my theory out the window. But the more I think about it, the more I think it's plausible that Stu could come back into it based on like all the little references to him oh, himself. The greatest part. You're gonna love this. We got a surprise for you, Sydney. Yeah, you're gonna love this one. It's a scream, baby. Hold on a sec. I'll be right back. It's Billy Loomis. It's Billy Loomis and he was Sydney's boyfriend and he was played by Luke Wilson and I got you, asshole. Oh, I'm sorry, Tara, but that's just not correct. The correct answer is Billy Loomis and Stu Mocker. There are two killers in the original stab. I'm afraid someone's gotta die now. And then also to like, you know, let's just call it bad continuity with the stunt doubles. But I don't want that to be the case. All right. So let's see what happens. Only time will tell. Scream 6. If it's awesome, brilliant. If Stu's not in it, I will probably be disappointed. But what do you think? Do you think Stu will be the killer in Scream 6? <laughs> no, I don't at all. No.